Hello, Golden Ones. It is I, the Kobold. In the past few weeks, we built a game of Pong from scratch. This week, we will take a step back from making games and discuss one of the most used features of Monogame. I'm talking about Sprite Batch. It is how you display most of your graphics, and what is a game without some sort of display. Not a video game. In our first Pong video, I talked about how Sprite Batch is supposed to be used in a basic manner. You have to call begin to start drawing, call some draws in between, and finally call an end to actually draw your images. What I showed you can get you up and running in a variety of projects, but there are a number of overrides of the draw method and a number of optional parameters in the begin method that allow for a lot of changes to the functionality of the Sprite Batch. The goal of this video, and the next, is to get you familiar with them. What options you enable in your begin method will have a huge impact in how your draws are handled. Here's all the optional parameters listed out. We will go over each individually. The first optional parameter is Sprite Sort Mode. By default, it will be deferred, and for most applications, that is probably the best option. Deferred means that the sprites will be drawn in the order that their draw was called, and that if you happen to have a number of draw calls using the same texture in a row, it batches them together for performance gain. Overall, this is the most unobtrusive way to gain some performance as you can draw it how you like. Texture might seem like a deferred option at first, but it is a different animal. Texture sorts your draw calls by texture first, then draws it by each texture. You lose the order you drew them, as if you swap textures a lot, it will ignore ordering between textures. If you structure your game where layers have their own texture, it will give you some performance gain, but Deferred will do a similar job if treated the same way. Front to back and back to front take into account a depth you give each draw command. They sort each sprite by depth, then they do a draw call in the direction you set it to, either front to back or back to front. The one downside is that it does not guarantee draw order with the layers, so you might see Z fighting become a problem. Immediate draws as soon as you do a draw command. It does not wait for an end call. Because of this, you can tweak settings between draw calls and they'll take effect for each individual draw. This is the least performative, but the most customizable. If you want each sprite to have different shader options, this is probably the way to draw them. However, you might get slowed down if you draw too many sprites a frame. Next of our optional parameters is how you want to handle blend state. This is how you want to blend each draw onto the screen, or in other words, how they will react to what's behind them. By default, your blend state will be set to alpha blend. Alpha blend and non pre multiply do basically the same thing in that they make use of the alpha channel of the sprite to not draw over things. The main difference is the alpha value has to be pre-multiplied to use alpha blend, while it can't have been multiplied by the non-pre-multiplied. If you load your texture via the content pipeline, it already have its alpha multiplied on its color value. Opaque ignores the alpha channel and draws over it. Whatever color is being hidden by the alpha, usually black, will be fully visible. Additive adds the color values to the background. This will lighten the image. Black color does nothing in this case. This is a good way to highlight objects as it can be made to look like a halo is over something. The alpha base blends and the additive blend are the most useful of these options. I suggest you try them out for yourselves. Sampler state is actually a combination of two options. This tells your graphics device how you want to pull and interpret the texture data in your calls. The first part is the filter you want to use when scaling, while the second is how you want to handle the coordinates outside of the texture dimensions. The filters are point, linear, and anisotropic. Point means that it does no real filtering. It doesn't try to blur between two pixels when blown up, it just multiplies the pixels so that they look bigger. It produces a blocky pixelated look. Linear will try to match the pixels in between the base pixels to colors in between them. This will produce a smoother, blurrier look. 
Anisotropic will take account your viewing angle when trying to match the colors between pixels. In 2D games, Anisotropic won't look much different from Linear, but will make a huge difference in 3D games. The options for handling texture coordinates outside the bounds of the texture is Clamp and Wrap. For Clamp, it will treat any value outside the boundary as the boundary. Wrap, on the other hand, will wrap to the opposite side and continue to use colors there. Basically, Wrap allows you to tile a single te texture infinitely. I use Clamp most of the time, but there are times when Wrap is fine. The Depth Stencil state dictates how you will use the Depth Stencil buffer. By default, it is set to not have one. The Rasterize state optional parameter dictates how the graphics device will translate your primitives to pixels. Both these are rather advanced and I won't really go over them for a while. Effect will allow you to pass a shader to be used by all draw calls within the sprite batch. This is another parameter I won't get into in this video, but I do have a video planned in the next couple of weeks that will go over this. Your shader can affect the way your sprites are drawn in any number of ways and can be one of the most important things to the look of your game. Please think about subscribing if you want to be informed when that video goes up. Finally, we have the transform matrix. The transform matrix lets us transform the geometry of our sprite calls. By default, it will use an identity matrix, but you can define it how you want. The easiest example in my mind is if you want to skew the sprites. Rotation and scaling doesn't quite give the same effect, so you might want to apply a transformation matrix to your sprite patch. This might come in handy for things like shadows and whatnot that you want to fake. I originally planned on including draw methods in this video as well, but timing has made it where I need to split this up. I hope you learned something on the slightly more thorough introduction to Monogame's sprite batch, and we'll continue on next week when we learn about the draw methods, how to rotate, and other tricks. As always, stay gold, code bold, and farewell from the code bold.